Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Burdened by medical bills, vendor cries for help. For 65-year-old Marcia Clark, Christmas did not catch her in good mood this year as she is burdened by the weight of expenses related to a trio of medical conditions, hypertension, diabetes, and epilepsy. Clark reported that she has been suffering from hypertension for over 10 years but was diagnosed with diabetes and epilepsy two years ago. A juice vendor in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew, she said that the treatment for her ailments costs over $20,000 each month, which she is finding difficult to afford as she only makes around $2,500 each day selling bottle juice and water. I really want help. As you can see, a little $50 water may have to come out and sell because you know you have to get your liquor pressure pill your sugar pill, and so on, Clark said. Clark also noted that the epilepsy medication is free at the clinic, but if they have none in stock, she would have to spend up to 11000 for a month's supply. I mostly try to get the seizure pill by the clinic because it is free there, but if them don't have any, may I help myself and find it, she stated. You have a pharmacy over there. I'm telling you it's one of the best pharmacies in Jamaica them deal with poor people. I can go over there and say sell me two days worth of medication and then sell me. Them not act uptight because it's up to on halfway tree. When me go there, me buy one pill, me buy two pills. Me no know how that no tired of me, she said. Clark also expressed a desire to stop selling on the streets due to the unpredictability of epileptic seizures. I'd like to really come off the road because I am now 65 going on to 66 years and I have become an epileptic since. Me only know I would have want to take over my life but me put God in front. The seizure dangerous. Me cannot go across the road and just drop, she reported. Additionally, Clark said although she is now on the National Health Fund NHF, it's still expensive for her to purchase the most needed medication. Them advised me to go and get the NHF so that kind of made the pills them cheaper, but it's still expensive for me. Our Christmas time now, how the time cool, much water don't sell now, you know, Clark explained. At the same time, she disclosed that her 35-year-old daughter tries to assist her whenever possible, but it's still not enough to cover her living expenses, plus covering the cost of tablets. Therefore, Clark is now looking to the public to assist her with purchasing a new igloo and donating products, so that she continued to make a living. I'm a person that used to be on the go for myself. Not because me get sickly now, me still want help myself. Me igloo mash up, some juice and igloo would have helped me well, Clark said. A breath of fresh air for Christmas. A man who gave his name only as Donovan, supervisor of the creamy ice cream store on Orange Street in downtown Kingston, is celebrating a relief from the stench and health hazard that affected the establishment when raw sewage overflowed from a manhole. Reporters visited the business earlier this week and Donovan was smiling, something he couldn't manage to do on December 6 as he watched a trickling down number of customers step cautiously on pallets inside the store to avoid the field as they purchased ice cream. Donovan was grateful for the response from the authorities to remedy the situation and thank reporters for highlighting their plight in the December 7 publication. Almost two weeks after the problem was corrected, the store is experiencing an increase in the number of customers. I feel much better because we can breathe fresh air. Do you see a lot of customers in here now? The last time you came, it wasn't like that. So I am very happy they came and did a good job I thank the authorities and the reporters for putting it in the paper, he said. The relief and increase in business was not felt by the creamy alone. A Rastafarian vendor of grown provision and vegetables close to the Haywood Street Orange Street intersection said he feels better that the sewage no longer flow where he does business. He said that he could not believe that the authorities allowed the problem to continue for so long. Me feel a little bitter because me now smell the mess. But, them should have used the water and wash it off when it done. They need to treat people like people and not like animals. It was awful and devastating. Me can't believe Jamaica this. Jamaicans are brilliant. 
but with the foolish things. Day after day, we had to walk in a sewage. It should not happen in the 21st century. A bus conductor who identified himself only by his alias Iron Teeth, who said he had to stomach the stench on many occasions during his trips to and from downtown Kingston in recent weeks, was pleased to receive a break from the raw sewage. It never pleasant for there and see them water their run. That's a no good thing because if people make even a mistake and step in at the water, them now go have nobody for so. They have some people who are sensitive and them they have medical bills I go fall upon. Me glad say it clean up still, said the bus conductor. Quali, a vendor near Orange and West Creek Street, who had also complained about the conditions on December 6, also said he was receiving more customers since the problem was fixed. A whole heap of improvement. People start walk past me again and may get more buyers. The thing more unique and I work better now. It is a wonderful feeling compared to what happened with you. I yes we do business and when the water run, business no good. When it clean, business flows. Port Maria Fishers stay afloat during pandemic. The Monia McDonald's lifeguard job in the tourism industry has been dealt a hard blow by the novel coronavirus pandemic, but her fishing operation has been going so far. Like McDonald, most fishers who spoke to reporters at the Page Beach in Port Mario recently said that the pandemic had little or no effect on their ability to earn a living. A lot of lot of people lost their jobs, McDonald acknowledged, mindful of the devastation caused by the virus toward most sectors of the economy. With the government subjected, most industries to curfew in effort to slow the spread of COVID-19, it placed fishers among essential workers, exempting them from restrictions. During COVID, a street semi day, she declared. McDonald, who tackles the treacherous waters with fishing pots and a troll net, sells her catch to other vendors for resale or to regular buyers. Asked if the sale for her fish declined since the onset of the pandemic, the young businesswoman replied, God bless me, and so I don't really have that problem. As the new year approaches and the country braces to deal with a new variant of the virus, McDonald said she will continue to bank on fishing. Me love it, it in my blood, she said. She added that her mother, Carl McDonald, does fishing for a living, and so did her late maternal grandmother. You can make a woman out of yourself by fishing, McDonald said, her posture reflecting the pride that comes with boat ownership on the vast stretch of natural beach. She pointed out that although a few other page women are fishers, she is the only woman from that community who own boats, two to be exact. A stone throw away from where she stood, her mother sat in a yard along the beach scaling fish for sale. Asked if the pandemic had affected her business, she replied, only a little. Some of the customers that would normally come they don't have the cash, for instance. If they used to buy 10 pounds, they now buy 5, but they buy. A veteran fisherman, George McLean, is no longer fit enough to take the sea, but he still owns and oversees a boat for the comfort of his seaside home. Fishing is the only thing that I don't see COVID affected, he reported. People have to eat, and people never stop going to sea, even during COVID. Donovan McDonald who has been in the business for almost 30 years, said that the pandemic is the worst disaster yet to have hit the fishing industry. However, he hastens to add that, when compared to other industries, the only one that puts food on his table has been largely spared. It is not bad. It is not bad, he said. Even when we have a lot of fish in the fridge, people still come and buy it. The people have it hard, but we have to give thanks for what we are selling. No joy for a daughter on first Christmas without her beloved father. Christmas will not be the same this year for Claudette Brown. In fact, she said there is no joy in it for neither she nor her son, who will be 12 years old on Christmas Day. The ritual of having her father, Philip Brown, around celebrating his grandson's birthday and her preparing a feast for them to enjoy will be no more as he passed away suddenly in September. This year, she said, the things that she used to cook for him, mutton fish, she doesn't even want to look about them anymore 
either because the memories are too fresh and the pain just too much. This will not be the same like last year because last year I draw soil for him, I bake cake, I cook his food, I bring it to him and me and him sit down and we have a family talk together and it was so good. It sounds like you are really tight with your father. Me and him have a close relationship because certain stuff I will go to him and I will say dad so and so and he will say don't do that, do that the correct way and I will say all right I will do that the correct way. If I don't have certain stuff he will say all right I will give it to you and my grandson. He always there for me in my time of troubles and need. You have, um, you are the only one for him? No, seven, seven of us, three boys and four girls. So was his death sudden or you knew? Sudden. The stick sick like that, went to the chest hospital. Then saying I have a heart problem and lungs problem. My son birthday was on the 25th and he was also there to let my son feel comfortable for his birthday and my son appreciate that but this year my son don't feel pleased because he's not here to help him celebrate his birthday and I feel so down because when I remember that I cook his pork last year I cook his mutton and I cook his fish and his cereal and his cake so I feel so discouraged not to have him beside my side to do all this stuff for him. He passed off on the 6th of September while I was on my leave and he buried on the 26th of November. It is a sad move for me because I was blocked out that day. So I have to go to the doctor because my pressure was not balancing. I have a headache, sleepless night, weakness and so forth. What was um, your fondest memory of him? I always go there and say, Phil man, I always bust out with that wonderful smile. I was smiling. Tell me one of the happiest memories you have of him. Things that you have done together. Places, cooking. What is that to cooking. say to each other? Cooking together. So he's a very good cook? Yeah. He's the person who taught you how to cook? Yes. So when you're going to be preparing a meal, that still brings back memories of him? Yes, because certain stuff I don't cook it anymore. Tell us, tell us about that. <laughs> um, when I try to cook certain meat, I don't try to buy it. I forget about it. If I'm going to prepare it, I just prepare like a small portion. Why is that so? Because I'm my son. When he's alive, I try to cook certain amount for me and his grandson so i try to i don't know cook it i cook a small portion of it you can't be able to no the things that memories tell us one of those things that you remember him saying to both you and your son i must not lick him <laughs> <laughs> i must not lick him if me carry him out of the yard Instead of bringing it back coming at the year because I am look after him for my three months old mm -hmm. till he is eleven. So he is not here to live to see his twelfth birthday. How are you coping? How are you gonna get through this? Counseling. Business? Counseling. Oh you have been receiving counseling? Yes. Okay. Um I know you are hurting, but talk to others who are hurting like yourself, maybe they have lost a, a parent Prince. or a, a partner, what would you say to them? Uh, same thing. You can to see counseling. Yeah. Barking Lodge Christmas Wish, a home for an elderly farmer. Some residents of Barking Lodge in St. Thomas are hopeful that their 2021 Christmas wish of building a new home for their needy neighbor will be fulfilled by the Ghetto Santa Ricardo McVolunteer Burke. The hope, which was initially sparked by Burke himself following a visit to his hometown, will see the refurbishing of a one-bedroom structure occupied by the elderly Denzel Williams. Those wish to assist Williams may contact Youth for Change Managing Director Ricardo Burke at 
8252. Uh, when we're doing our food drive, we came here and delivered some food to him and stuff, and then we realized that the house is in a deplorable condition. We wanted to get some help for him in terms of for this Christmas, I wanted it to be our Christmas project. So we're appealing to persons out there who want to assist to please do so. When we visited, I realized that. I remember growing up, we used to cook on wood fire and stuff like that. But in a modern time like this, it's kind of overwhelming to see the state of his house, you know. And I really want, I really want to provide or create that opportunity for him, so he can live a better, comfortable life. Because many of us um, are more privileged, but there are many of us also who just need a helping hand to carry on in life. And if you see the living condition, you will understand. The man don't even want a stove or a good bed, you know. And just to for the fact that if you even find a place where you can rest in at night, even that alone, it should be okay. So we want to rebuild the house. Uh, we can do it in one day because we have persons who are willing to volunteer their time and, and reconstruct. And I myself also can do a few things. So I really want to get some, some help for him in terms of getting back this uh, structure together so he can feel a bit more comfortable at night. I would be grateful if Denzel get this house. It would make my Christmas a joy. And the reason for that, at times when rain fall, it is wet because at times it complain to me. I have to put all watch pan on the bed. So if you get the house, it would be a joy for me. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.